Get on. Well, hello there. Well, hello there. It's 10.03. A little behind on our show start. Ah. So what happens when you got a lot of shit to get done, my friend? Oh, we happen to be talking about that. The peak formula today. Isn't that interesting? As I tie my tie. You know, I, uh, you know who makes my suits? Would you like to know who makes my suits, my friend? I will tell you. The same man who makes Conor McGregor's suits. Now, what I can tell you is having a suit this nice does not actually make you a good fighter. But what I can tell you is that it still looks fucking great. The guy's name is David August. David August. If you are in the game to get a suit, that is the man that does almost all the suits for the MMA guys. His daughters and my daughters go to school together. And so we hang out a bit. And uh, he's a great man. And uh, my suits and my shirts, a little GJWs on the sleeves, these are all made by David August. He has company, uh, he has locations, I believe, in New York, Vegas, and in LA. Um, and then has a one here in Orange County where his main office is, which is where we live and he lives. And uh, so there you go. So part of the peak formula we're going to talk about today um, has to do with suits. No, actually it doesn't, but let me tell you a tale. Back in my banking days, my mortgage days, there was a, I made a move. I sold my first mortgage company and my brother and I left with all the processors and uh, we left with all of the internal team who I had hired and raised up from some of them were pizza delivery girls, no bullshit, became my secretary, became my lead processor. People tend to grow quickly when they're in my space and my environment, uh, mostly because I expect them to. Uh, so anyways, so we leave this first business um, and my brother and I open up a mortgage shop in Vegas and we thought that one of the greatest investments that you could make was in a desk. Oh, because everybody knows the key to success is to have a fucking great desk or a great suit. Was so I believed. We went and we purchased these desks. These desks were like six, five, six thousand, seven thousand dollars a piece for a desk. The part that we neglected to actually consider at the time in our newness in business after our first three years was that all of our business was virtual. So there I have this big office with these fucking great desks, only to realize I never have clients actually come into the office to sit at the desk. So who's sitting at the desk in a suit every day? Me, by myself, in the cool desk, recognizing that a man's desk does not create his destiny, so you could actually have no desk and sit at Starbucks and still create a lot of cool shit. In case you were wondering if I was going to tell you, the peak formula comes down to your desk. And just like this suit does not make me fight any better, nor does this suit make Conor McGregor fight any better, that possibly sometimes the environment that you're in between desks and suits might support you. So I'm going to grab my jacket and we are going to move this chair. Uh, Jeffrey's gonna find me a clicker for my PowerPoint. This is one of our offices that we are currently in. We have a couple. We just had another one put in, and um, it was, uh, it's an amazing office. It's right close by. I just did my first call inside of that office this morning with one of our four kings, uh, one of our candidates, a wonderful man. That's one difference about four kings. We don't even talk about who's in the four kings experience. Uh, these men are big, badasses, and they do a lot of really cool shit. So... If that's you and you are wanting the fast track to the core of the game with me, you might want to check out join for, jointhefourkings.com and uh, see if maybe you're fit. Uh, we are doing interviews this week with all the men who applied last week. First one happened this morning. Just got back from Cabo. So uh, I think we're into the show. Well, let's, uh, let's do a little pre-comments. Where's my cell phone at? Let's do a little pre-comments and then we'll do a little some something and then we'll, we'll actually get after this. Um, <clears throat> I do this show for free. Did you guys know this? I actually don't do it for free. I actually pay to do this show. Um, 
And uh, I wear this suit because I like it, and I don't get an opportunity to wear a suit too often because I actually don't wear suits, suits every day. I used to wear suits every day, and then I decided I didn't want to wear suits any, more, any day, and so I didn't. Um, but let's come to, uh, to some of your comments here on the show. Right now, we've got about 65 of you on. So if you were on the show live right now, would love for you to give us a little, a little, a little shout out. Uh, William Toadvine, looking vacationed up, boom. Morning Champ from Stephen Wargon. Matthew Peterson, morning guys. John Broda, good afternoon, coach. Randy Mogul, hi, Garrett. Jonathan Beasley, good morning, coach. Josh Frederick, love what you're doing. Can't explain how many times your lessons have filled in the gaps and brought clarity to my life. Thank you. Patrick Jones, good morning, coach. Patrick Grogan, coach. Pat DeVille, good morning from Ireland. Ireland! There we go. It's the land of McGregor, Conor McGregor. You guys are like the craziest fans of all time. Like, I have as much fun watching the Irish cheer as I do watch Conor fight. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite the deal. I see why you guys are all up into soccer, too. Uh, morning, uh, Coach from Bryce. Luis Garcia. Hey, Coach, every time I tune in, I get the goosebumps. Well done! Hopefully that's not because I turn you on thoroughly. Uh, but, uh, you know, we turn on your heart and your mind. I get the goosebumps too when shit's exciting for me. Mark Williamson, high coach, DC Srap, high coach, looking sharp. Patrick Jones, love Warrior Book. Week two in Fast Track. Woo! Warrior Book 400, Woody Crenshaw. Todd Gaster, hey bud, thanks for leading. You got it. Todd was from a mastermind I used to be part of uh, with Mr. Nations, Mr. Kevin Nations. We called him Papa Kev. Uh, one of the big influences in my world four years ago to, uh, to get us off the ground with Warrior and get me quit fucking around with like 12 other businesses and just go all in. Uh, Gary Baxter, high coach, Nicholas Freeman, ready for some words of wisdom. Rob Eskenasi. I think I said that right. Good morning. Patrick Jones, last night I told my wife I love here for, oh, shit. This is some serious business. I'm about to throw this down, Patrick. Great job. Last night I told my wife I love her for the first time in a long time. Wow, the stack was awesome. Went from I hate her fucking guts to I love you. This was a conversation I had with, uh, with one of the individuals I was interviewing this morning for the Four Kings was the reality to take, whether I'm dealing with, whether you're dealing with a person who is, you know, making $1,000 a month, $10,000 a month, $100,000 a month, a million a month, $10 million a month, $100 million a month in production, like regardless across the board, here's what I found common. Um, the story is what changes. I was having this conversation with a guy, our new neighbor in the place I'm moving into, which is one of the owners and founders of Costco, and this, the, the story of who he saw himself to be is what changed the trajectory of their businesses in their life. The owner Schwinn lives in my neighborhood too. And it, the same situation. All these guys started from the same fucking place, just like you. They started with a story of who they believed themselves to be and then that story shifted. What we have found is inside the Warrior Book Brotherhood and inside this network of men, we have created a system known as the Warrior Stack, which is an ability, as is being demonstrated right here, uh, by Patrick. Thank you, Patrick, for being so vulnerable and honest this morning said last night I told my wife how I love her how how I love her for the first time in a long time and I went from the stack saying I fucking hate her to I love her and these kind of shifts are only possible they're only possible if you have the courage to actually change your story so the difference between a guy that makes a thousand a month and a guy that makes a hundred thousand a month or a guy that makes a thousand hundred thousand a month or a million a month always comes down to the same thing which is a man who what a man who tells a different story and inside of that story is the acquisition of mindsets and skill sets and the ability to do more shit. But you can't do more shit if you won't be more shit. That's why the tagline phrase for Wake Up Warrior in this entire movement is be more, do more, suck less. We'll talk about that here later today too. This idea of being more though is a function of changing how you think. And Patrick, that's what you did. You changed the story inside of the warrior stack and you went from I hate you, bitch die, which is one of my favorite about my wife when I'm super pissed. And people are like, how do you say that about your wife? You say that when you recognize that the tool in front of you known as the warrior stack, which many of you do not have access to because you're not part of the Warrior Book Brotherhood. So as much as you like this show, I would still encourage you to get your ass over to warriorbook.com and make sure you're on that list. March 1st, we bring in another uh, 100 men. Uh, Dan says, I love these great boosts for the day. You're welcome. Jeremy Horner, my ears are open, ready for some straight talk. Lenny, DTWF, which is our hashtag for do the fucking work. Every day, or rest, ready to roll. Dan, love the studio and setup. Bryce, Warrior Book is the real deal, making leaps and bounds in all areas of my life. Ted, Mer Ted Prendez, good morning, coach. Patrick Jones, DTFW. So let's stop fucking around. And uh, my name is Garrett J. White. I am the host 
of Wake Up Warrior TV and founder of the Wake Up Warrior movement. When you walk in a room and you have nothing to hide, you're the single most motherfucking power guy in that room. Are we back? We're back. We just notified by my studio team that we have a camera that has now failed on us twice. Two weeks in a row, which means you're just going to get this direct cast as I make love to this camera. Oh, 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 we're dancing, we're dancing, we're dancing with this one because the other camera angle is fucked. And uh, this is a message to the team. This will be the last week that that camera is fucked. We will have this problem fixed by next week. Because two weeks in a row is unacceptable. Three weeks in a row, somebody fucking dies, and I break all the cameras. All right, here we go. Gentlemen, we are here having a conversation today about this idea right here, the peak formula. The peak formula. You know why I like this picture and this picture, like me right here real time and this picture right here from the last Warrior Week, Warrior Week 35, is because both of these are me. Both of these are me. The guy was also in the polo, in, in my Lulu pants, my anti-ball crushing pants, they're called ABC pants. You might want to check them out. Lulu's got some shit going on. I know it sounds total pussy. I get it. Listen, I never would have done the Lulu thing either until I started testing them out. Anti-ball crusher, literally. ABC pants, that's what they're called. The founder created pants that don't crush your balls. Inside of that game, polo and anti-ball crushing pants, dressed up in the David August suit or rocking 5'11 gear at Warrior Week, all of these angles are me. And I'm going to have you consider today, as we talk about this idea of the peak performance formula, the ability to produce at your highest level, that the fundamental game that must shift inside of your mind is the following reality, and that all of you must exist inside of your day-to-day -day reality, or you are fucked. There is no peak performance in hiding aspects of who you are. There is no peak formula that will save you from a piece of you that you continue to reject and ignore. Every single day, you and I are living this conversation of production. We attempt to produce, to create, to fix, to move, to grow, to become more today than we were yesterday. But to pull this off, to pull this off, one of the fundamental teachings of the Wake Up Warrior movement is this, that this is all of me. This is all of me. Now, I had the hardest time with this. The hardest time with accepting that all of these aspects were me. That there was a quiet me. That there was a sad me. There was a happy me. There was a positive me. There was a fuck you me. That just woke up and just wanted to tell everybody to fuck off. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to hear from you. Quit fucking looking at me. Don't talk to me. Don't email me. And that was all just like messages that are coming from my kids. Let alone everybody else. And yet there was this other part of me that had deep empathy for humanity and I wanted to serve and to grow and to connect. And then on the flip side of the coin, there's this other part of me that just says, you know what, I'd rather just wrap this chain around your neck and fucking choke you out. What was this circus of emotions that was going on inside of me? I will tell you right now, every powerful producer I've ever met, every man that comes to the doors of this movement has figured out or is searching to figure out one game underneath all the things I'm going to share with you today. Because if you don't fucking get this one, all the rest doesn't matter. And it's what we call the code of warrior. The foundational code, which begins with being real. What are the facts about you? What are the facts about you? And can you own those facts? You can own those facts over here maybe by yourself, but can you own them in a conversation with your wife? Can you own them in a conversation with your children? Can you own those facts in a conversation with people you don't even know? Second piece of the code, get raw. It's one thing to tell the truth inside of the facts of your story. It's another thing to be able to be emotionally available to wrap those facts with some feelings. There's a piece inside of you that is a fuck you guy that just wants to tell people to fuck off. There's also a piece inside of you that just wants to be scared. To let people know, hey, listen, man, I don't got shit figured out. I'm nervous. I wake up fucking scared. I wake up terrified. This was what I was bonding and connecting with this man this morning on the phone. As we're talking through his application to Warrior Kings was this. I'm like, dude, I get you, bro. I was like, I've had these paranoias. I still have this trigger inside because of all these businesses I built in the past that imploded. Of shit, is this car going to go through when we run it? Even though the accounts show and demonstrate that that is 
fucking laughable and that the card that I'm using it's impossible to not go through and yet inside of that there's still this trigger inside this anxiety of shit it might all come to an end it's one thing when a man builds a business once and then loses it it's another thing when a man builds it a second time because the residue of that past is here same thing goes for a man who has been in a marriage builds that marriage gets divorced goes to the hole gets remarried comes back to the peak and now still has the residue of the past there's the past of who i was and where i came from i didn't come from shit i didn't have money growing up i grew up in stockton california this is where i went up till junior high school and then junior high school moved to central washington to a place called yakima there wasn't shit going on for money in those environments nobody had any money there wasn't any prosperity or abundance inside of that we were sports fighting drugs and problems that was the world i grew up in and inside of that then when i fight to be in this place of prosperity and to be in this new place married to a woman who pushes and drives me i'm constantly fighting this other side of me that's constantly attempting to pull me back to who i used to be trust me there's a piece of me who wants to put a backpack on tank top flip-flops shorts roll up the stock and just be done I'm like dude it's easy fucking make xyz dollars don't stress much have other stresses that's almost kind of easier to deal with than some of the stress i'm dealing with right now maybe i need to shift and change the game so the way we get through this and we break through it is we first become owners of the facts inside of those facts we become owners of the feelings around those facts and inside of those feelings it opens us up to the third piece of the code which is to stay relevant what do you actually want what do you want right most men those on live stream with stream with us right now most men day to day have no idea what they want if i came to you honestly i followed you around with the gopro we sat down for a little lunch we got a sandwich a panini i don't know why panini but let's pretend we got a panini we got a panini we got ourselves some iced tea we got a little lemon up in there put a little sugar in there mix that shit up we got a little iced tea we got a panini and an iced tea and you and i start to have a conversation of possibility and i say hey tell me what you want right now over the next 11 months in your life what do you want by the end of this year december 2017 what is it that if you had it what would it look like and why do you want it and then tell me this across the board body being balanced business body being balanced business put those four together and what you have is a superhuman king take any of these four pieces apart and have no clarity on them you're fucked and so most men want to be honest they want to be all these things but they can't be all these things why because to be real and to get raw to tell the facts and then to be honest about the feelings and to allow those feelings to flow we get fucked up because even if we get those two we don't even know where we're trying to go where am I trying to go? How do I win? This was my frustration in life with my wife. It was a frustration in my life with God. My frustration in life with balance and being. The two B's inside the core four. I didn't have a clear win. Didn't know how I was going to win. Didn't know where I was going exactly. And didn't know how I was going to get there because I didn't know where I was trying to go anyways. Last piece. Results. Results. Either you get them or you don't. You either get them or you don't. And everything I'm going to share with you in the rest of the show today doesn't mean shit it'll just be more information in your head and you should probably tell me to fuck off get off this and go to work go do something else go masturbate do something just fuck go to go somewhere else if you don't get the foundation if you don't get the foundation of this none of this works the code is what allows this to work be a liar don't live by the code makes it impossible to be a peak performer live by the code give all versions of you an opportunity to grow and to live and to be existing around you now you got a shot real raw relevant results and one of the greatest places we found to pull that off for a man to gain access to that through immersion is through the crucible we call warrior week Gentlemen, we live by code here. That code itself is life. That code itself is life. If you violate the code, you die. If you violate the code, you fucking die. The code is simple. You can boil it down to one principle. Stop fucking lying. Stop lying to yourself about where you are. Stop lying to yourself about what you want. Stop lying to yourself about where you want to go. It is a double-edged sword. 
both the lies of denying your desire for a life that you truly want and number two lying about where you are right now you are wet you are laying in a beach in a strange place that you do not know because you were transplanted here with a hood on no one knows where you are your wife and children do not know where you are you don't even fucking know where you are you can do nothing about those circumstances the only way you can help them is to help yourself. If the king doesn't rise, the kingdom dies. If the king doesn't rise, the kingdom dies. The minute those men on your unit decide to actually show me that they give up fuck, not just in words, oh Garrett, I want to have it all. Garrett, I'm going to tell the truth. Garrett, I'm going to live by the code. Garrett, I want to live for my wife, my children, and my legacy. I want to have it all. Bullshit. Shut your fucking mouth and show me. Men don't trust me because of how I talk. They trust me because of how I fucking walk. And I've never asked a man here to do anything I have not done. Look. Huddle up and look at each other. Huddle up and look at each other. Better. Better. Okay. Time for some comments. Time for some comments. Time for us to go through a little bit of the live interaction like I promise you we do. Um, all right, all right. Let's come back up here. Time to do a stack on that camera. Yeah, no shit, dude. We're going to do some stack on that camera. We started doing some stacks on that camera already. Uh, Jeff Fisher said, what if I'm a teacher and I'm not a businessman? Jeff Fisher, great question, bro. Guess what? Do you know that my degree is in PE? Um, I actually don't have a business degree. I have a degree in physical education. I was a seventh grade girls PE teacher who received notes every single day from her, his class that told him that he, they couldn't participate in class because they were having their menstrual cycle. At one given point, I had 50 plus girls on the side of the gym while I was trying to coach four girls on how to participate in fitness during PE. Yes, I was a teacher. So what do you do if you're a teacher? The principles here are exactly the same. I may speak to the game of entrepreneurism because that's what I live in and that's the game that I speak to, but all of us are entrepreneurs at heart. Like, you're an entrepreneur, Jeff. Every single day you're called to produce. The code lives the same for you as it does for me. The peak performance formula is the same for a man inside that position as it does for me. Does that mean that you'll be a teacher forever? I'm still a teacher. I'm the highest paid PE teacher in the world right now. There's no PE teacher higher paid than me. I'm a fucking, you just saw the video. I'm a physical education instructor. Just way more fucking fun to do what I do now than it was to teach seventh grade girls PE and get notes about how I can't participate because I had my period. Guys try to give me a note from their mom at Warrior Week. Hey, I can't participate. I have a period. I'm like, well, too bad. Here's a tampon. Strap it to your arm and let's go. So, Jeff, this applies across the board, buddy. Just apply the principles inside of what this looks like as being a teacher. You're a producer, too, and you're a creator, and you're an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur and an entrepreneur are exactly the same. The only difference is an entrepreneur takes big risks inside of the external game in order to create the internal game. The entrepreneur operates as a creator inside the game that's being managed by another entrepreneur. It's not a bad thing, dude. I've been both. I've been both. There is no problem. I have guys on my team right now who kill it, who could go be entrepreneurs on their own, but choose to be entrepreneurs inside. Now, if you look at yourself as an employee, and then that's a whole nother conversation. And we'll talk about that uh, another day. Uh, Matthew Peterson said, I believe this can help all men regardless, Jeff. Yes, for sure. Matthew, you got exactly right. William Tovine, you're talking to me today. Jeff, thanks, Matt. Went black. We're back. Robert Diaz, that's the sign I've been waiting for. Yakima, Washington. I grew up in the Lower Valley. Ah, beautiful. Robert, I went to Eisenhower High School, buddy. Graduated, graduated in 1990, 1994. Spring of 94, buddy. Spring 94, Eisenhower High School. Scott Koshiv, how about truck drivers, not an entrepreneur? Same deal. Scott, you got fucking all day long to be listening to shit when you're driving. All day long, man. You are a dry, you are not a truck driver. You are in a mobile university. 
you got opportunity every single day to study your ass off, which is a big reason why you should be in Warrior Book because you got an opportunity with Warrior Book to study your ass off while you're driving every single day and at least give yourself a shot to ask yourself a question. I was telling this on Cabo. We were going back. A guy was driving us back. He's a 20-year-old kid. He was driving me and my wife back from uh, Resort Pedregal to the airport in San Jose to fly back to Orange County. And I was with the driver and I speak Spanish uh, fluently and we were having a conversation back and forth. And, um, and we were talking about how he's a student and how he wants to create big things, etc. And I said, the only thing you need to worry about is the kind of questions you're asking. He's like, what do you mean? I said, take, for example, driving this car. Have you ever asked yourself the question, who would I have to be to own the fleet of cars that drive individuals like me back and forth from these resorts? And he was like, quiet. And he said, no. I was like, I get it. And I explained to him, I said, there was a time, remember, I had this shift where I was reading a book by someone and my mind said, why are you not writing books? I'd spent 15 years reading books and I'd never once considered that I should write a book. Driving truck and asking, well, who would I have to be to own 30 trucks with 30 guys to drive for me? That's a different question. And then you go to fucking work and studying out those answers. All right, let's keep rolling down here with a few of these. Uh, Tony Pope, watching videos has helped me create a better dialogue with my wife. Thanks for all you do. Brother, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that that dialogue serves you, number one. And number two, that that's led to deeper sexual connection. It's led to deeper intimate connection and deeper communication. Because at the end of the day, every married man wants the same thing. He wants to feel like he's got a ride or die woman he can call his best friend and also his lover all at once. And yes, both of those. And some people are like, well, you can't be best friends and lovers. Some people say it kills attraction. I'm going to have you say, consider you can turn on the trigger and you can be both. But it does require you to be honest. Okay, let's keep going. Um, Chris Holland, can't wait to be a warrior with y'all. I'm three years on, on my making business work. I've never heard someone make more insight on what I deal with every day. Chris, get into Warrior Book. All you guys, Patrick, Jeff, Tony, Sean, all you guys, listen, I'm not going to bullshit you. Like, get your ass to warriorbook.com and get inside the game with Warrior Book. Like, I ha it, the reason I created Warrior Book was so that we could give an opportunity to guys like you to play. This TV show, we're going to teach you some stuff, and I'm going to go through this right now. But ultimately, the real game was this. Like, how do I assist men who were where I used to be? What people don't see about me is they don't see how much money I spent on books and audio programs. And literally, it's all I could afford. Every week, I would go to the Barnes & Noble. I would buy myself a new audio tape. I had an Audi at the time with a tape player. So I would get the tape version because I could play it in my car when I drove around. I fucking listened to Robert Kiyosaki and so many other individuals at that time. More, I started to sound like them. My mind started having dreams about the shit they were talking about. Like many of you get here in Warrior. You want to live the have-it-all lifestyle? You want to live the warrior experience? You want to live as a modern warrior king? You want to be a modern man the way we define it? You're going to have to immerse yourself in the conversation. And the power of these phones is the ability to replay videos like this, this show, over and over and over again. But Warrior Book gives you the specific curriculum and doctrine to be able to pull that off. So let's, uh, let's get into our content for the day. And um, hopefully we've laid some groundwork here to give you a shot at understanding this. The peak formula. So whether you're dealing with athletes or whether you're dealing with entrepreneurs or whether you're dealing with teachers or you're dealing with truck drivers, there are always going to be the elite inside of every category. There are teachers who are elite and there are teachers that are horseshit. There are entrepreneurs that are elite, and then there is the rest of the world that probably should stop trying to be an entrepreneur and go work for an entrepreneur. There are the elite in athletics, and then there's everybody else. But the elite all have a series of games connected to them, particularly inside of production. When it comes to money and business, there are a series of games that a man must create for himself in order to perform at the highest level. We're assuming now that you get that if you're fucking lying all the time, if you can't tell the fucking truth, then everything I'm about to share with you doesn't mean shit. But let's assume then that you have grasped this idea that my gateway to power, my gateway to possibility is to own the code in my life. The foundational code is be real, get raw, stay relevant with a ruthless commitment to big ass results today. The results are my measuring stick for success. Now push that to the side. What is the first game that we look at? It's time. Now, we're going to talk about time through a series of conversations. Here's the first conversation. In the world of production, there are two thought processes that come about. One thought process is that I am entitled to results through how much I do and how much I put time and effort into. I put time and effort in. I am then entitled to a result. 
I put time and effort into my wife, I'm entitled to a result. I put time and effort into my job, I'm entitled to a result. I put time and effort into my business and I am entitled to a result. That's one thought process. The other thought process doesn't measure itself based on time. It measures itself based upon results. The creators, the producers, the entrepreneurs of the world don't operate from a time and effort space. They operate from a what? They operate from a results driven space. The first time I was introduced to this conversation was 14 years ago by Dan Sullivan, the trainer and the owner of Strategic Coach, of which I'm still an active participant. This game of measuring these two bases of my time and effort and in contrast to my results. Now, if I step back and I look at this then, the first domain that I had to shift in my mind as a performer was that all time was not created equal. That my time was valued different in these two worlds. My time in effort and my time in results. The have it all lifestyle demands that a man change his frame on how he sees time. And that time itself becomes the most valuable resource that he cannot get more of in the future. The only guarantee you have is for the time you have right now. And the difference between the guy that does a million a month, a hundred million a month, and a thousand a month, or a dollar a month, the only distinction is the capacity of that man to create in the space of time. There's no more time to the truck driver who drives for the trucking company than the time given to the man who owns the trucking company. These thought processes, the only thing that is different is the capacity of the man inside of time. The lower down the scale that you go in production, people devalue their time and they value something interesting. They value the money. They will give their time for the money. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just having you consider the peak performers look at their time different. They are willing to pay in order to buy more time. Not that more time exists, but they value their time higher than they value the money. Give me more time because my capacity in time is worth X. My capacity in time over here on this side might be worth Y. So I'm sitting having a conversation with an entrepreneur recently and uh, we're having a conversation about Four Kings and him joining this and we're talking about productivity inside of his business. He's like, dude, I measured down my times in this bi these business over here. My time might be worth three, $400 an hour and my time's over here in these. My time is worth around $25,000 an hour. I was like, okay, well, that seems like a pretty simple equation. What do you think? He's like, dude, this makes no fucking sense. I can get back 15, 20 hours of my time every single week if I just dump and unload these businesses. And I was like, I get it. So what do you think you need to do? Well, that's probably what I need to do. Okay, got it. But the value is what? The value is time. Like you're not getting any more of this shit. The higher up the game of performance, the more and more value is placed on time and the experience inside of time. Whereas the guy working the night shift at the gas station puts little value on his time. The guy that owns 375 gas stations puts more value on his time. I will not do this, I will not do this. Now, don't get me wrong. Dude, listen, I have worked the shittiest jobs of all time. I worked as a cattle slaughtering plant, nighttime sanitation engineer. What does this translate out to? I was a fucking guy in a big yellow suit, wetsuit with hot ass hoses, me and a whole bunch of dudes cleaning up cow guts and baby cow fetuses and fucking shit all night, 10 hours a night, every single night for nine months. I worked the night shift cleaning shit. My skin smelled like cows and gross shit. So I'm not coming from a place of like looking down on individuals, but what I can say is in that space, not one fucking time did I think about time. I thought about money. And I'm gonna have you consider that inside of this game, you've gotta start valuing your time more, but you've also have to be realistic about how much value you can create inside of time. One hour with you and one hour with me might not be the same time. In one hour, you're still contemplating on how to even spell a certain word. And in that same hour of time, I've produced an entire business that went from concept to cash in 60 minutes. Vice versa, we may move to a different domain in your life while I'm still pontificating and you're fucking dominating because who we are inside of time is not the same. 
How do you weaken a man's position inside of time? You have him lie. You have him not tell the fucking truth. You have him live from this place of bullshit instead of living from a place of truth. Live in a lie, your time itself becomes distorted. Live in truth, your time itself becomes more clear. One of the fastest ways to buy more time, fast ways to buy more time isn't hiring somebody else. It's not getting somebody to do your lawn. It's not hiring an assistant. It's not automating your business. It's not delegating. It's not abdicating. It's not masturbating. It's none of these things. You want to buy more time? You're going to have to get rid of the bullshit. You want to get rid of the bullshit? You're going to have to stop fucking lying. Gateway to more time. Stop tolerating the lies. Now, what does time give us? Time gives us something interesting. With time comes space. Now, I'm not talking about the final frontier. I'm talking about the opportunity and ability in your life to sit down and inside of that place to think. When you buy more time and when you value your time, what you're after is not more time. What you're after is more space. It's like a business owner owns seven businesses, but four of them are completely unproductive and not profitable. Two of them are absolutely profitable, and they rob Peter to pay Paul. They take money from these businesses to fund those businesses. And you ask one simple question, why the fuck do you have these other businesses? Well, because of this, this, and this. And I said, what are you most valuable asset right now? And we start talking through it, and they start to see it's time. And they're like, shit, it's time. I was like, exactly, but it's not time for time. Say, who gives a fuck what time you got left? So you got 20 hours a week left. So you got 15 hours a week. So you just bought yourself 30 hours a week. Who gives a shit? What are you actually after? Oh, man, I'm after space. So I've coined this idea that we're no longer in the information age, we're in the chaos age or the confusion age. You and I, we, it, is more, more, it is more feasible for you to be more confused by going online every day than it is for you to be more clear. You would think that having access to all this information and this beautiful concept inside of our cell phones would make us more fucking clear. But it doesn't. For most men, this clarity that they're searching for will never come because they don't own their time. And because they don't own their time, they are nowhere to be found inside of space. Every second of the day is filled with stress. And when your life is filled with stress and when you have no space, you become crazy. You know what crazy men do? Crazy men do crazy shit. Crazy men shade on their wives. Crazy men... Cheat on their families. Crazy men burn their businesses to the ground. Crazy men stay in the same shitty job for 30 years. Every day waking up with the pain inside their gut of saying, what the fuck am I doing? Crazy men ignore the reality of the conditions of their family and their marital life, hoping that shit will just be different sometime in the future. Crazy men, crazy men continue to abuse the fuck out of their bodies and just think it'll be all right and then are surprised as they get older when they hear about people having heart attacks in the middle of the night who are their age. Yeah, it's in this place, this place called space, that life starts to actually make sense. But you can't get there if you're a slave to time and you devalue your time. When you value your time and you increase your skill sets to produce inside of time, the game changes. What you open up to is space. And this is the purpose and the intention behind Warrior X. Warrior X was built to open up one thing and one thing only. It wasn't to take a man across the threshold of accomplishing everything in 36 hours. <laughs> Warrior X was created to assist a man to punch through the bullshit and to see the value inside of himself. 
It was built to create, through the immersion of a crucible and an experience, the opportunity for a man for the very first time to value his time, and inside of that, for the very first time, to experience space. Okay, so we're going to come to our comments. Uh, let's take a few comments here as we keep down this process. Um, we have uh, a couple that came in. Chris said, I can't wait to be a worry with y'all. I'm three years in the making of my business uh, work. I've never heard someone say more inside on what I deal with every single day. Uh, Chris, I hope that it connects and helps, brother. Listen, uh, we'd invite you to make the same decision that we can do every time on this show. Uh, continue to get value from here. I hope that this show continues every week to produce that for you. Uh, but on top of that also, I'd invite you to take that next step and to step into the Warrior Book experience or even beyond into Warrior X or Warrior Week. Uh, Jonathan Beasley, I'm only a week into Warrior Book 400 and it's more than paid for itself. Crazy amount of value content on an executable life strategy. I agree. Well done, Jonathan. Thank you for the witness here in work, or with the Warrior Book 400. Next group is opened up is on March 1st, 2017. Jason, I'm a major trans. Uh, I'm in major trans transposition, back surgery, freshly separated, and a new position at a new company. My narcissistic wife, I uh, wife has manipulated all three daughters, always from me. So here's the hard part, Jason. You ready? You ready for the hard part? This is the hard part. Guess who created that? This is the hard part. The hard, you know what the easy part is? Easy part is to look at and say narcissistic wife or crazy bitch. Trust me, I did it for a decade. I did it with two women. My first wife and my second wife. And it was weird what happened this moment that I claimed complete ownership of my results. And what I mean by that is my results, my relationship with my kids is my relationship with my kids, regardless of what my ex-wife did or what my current wife is doing, that it was on me. This is a hard thing to do, though. This is a hard thing to do because then it takes away the excuse for us to actually own it. But Jason, I get it, dude. I've fucking done it so many times. It's not even funny. This is why we built the Warrior Stack. Just like you saw earlier in the show, it allows a guy to go from fuck you very much to I love you. Because what changes is a story. What changes is the story about time, the story about space, the story about you. Let's keep going here um, with some other ones. <clears throat> Feed, yes, I get it. Feed's having some problems. Hopefully you guys are able to get this clear enough. Um, how do we sign up for Warrior X? Are there spots available? Yeah, there's a link that we'll post here inside this thread. Uh, Warrior X is amazing. It's an everyman investment. Uh, which means Warrior X was built for every man. It was built for entrepreneurs, non-entrepreneurs, employees, executives, just men looking to punch a hole in the reality for 36 hours with us in the Crucible, 12 to 18 men per group, three to four trainers at the same time here in Laguna Beach, California. Uh, fucking ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous experience for what it is. Uh, it's the preparation beforehand and the preparation in. Uh, Greg Lass, who I need in. I have to get myself together. Good. Well, you know what to do next. Jeff, just finished my first stack. Such a powerful tool. Warrior Book has opened my eyes and shown me that I'm in control of my direction. Emotions have become tools, not facts. Adam Splaver, I have two men who work for me. I want them to sign up. Adam, I would hit up, uh, hit up uh, Coach Sam about that. We'll also put the link here in the thread. One thing that's interesting, we have a lot of businesses these days uh, who are actually contracting Wake Up Warrior 
um, and men inside our brotherhood, entrepreneurs who want their teams to be on the same page. So what they do to get their teams on the same page is they have the men all speak the same doctrine. Because when you all speak the same doctrine, life itself moves faster. It moves faster because everybody's living by the code. And when you live by the code in business as a unit, as an organization, shit works. And it works faster, more efficiently, more productively. The game itself is a complete shit show if the king doesn't live in truth. But it becomes a secondary shit show if the rest of your team doesn't live in that same truth. So let's come back here, a little review on what we've covered today. And we'll go through the last parts of this. The peak performance for me then is telling me that the first thing I must value is my time and that that time itself matters. That my value in time in how I see my time, one hour and one hour is not equal. One hour in my world might not be one equal in your world. Maybe you do 10 times the production I do. One hour in my world might be 10 times the production you do. But nonetheless, the more productive you become, the more value on your time in buying time back. Why? Because inside of that time, we find the magic game of space. Space gives us something, though. It gives us birth to perspective. It's inside of space that we see things differently. This is why the tool, the warrior stack, is so powerful for men inside this game. Because it allows them to say, here is the story I'm telling. It's given me a result. I'm not necessarily happy about it. Here is the story that I'm telling. And inside of this, when we do the warrior stack, it freezes time. We invest an hour into contemplation and searching through a series of questions. We find space and inside that phase space, we find new perspective. Now, this weekend when I'm in Cabo with my wife for Valentine's vacation, we're hitting a shit show. I got triggered by some shit. I started freaking out. I started doing, saying things, doing things that were just fucking ridiculous. But I was going that way because I was triggered. I was stuck and I was drifting. I was in a story. I did not have space and I was not owning my time. My time was being owned by my feelings and there was no space, hence the perspective that I had about my wife, the perspective I had about us, the perspective I had about where we were going was completely jacked. How was it jacked? How was that perspective jacked? Because my story was being owned outside of space. So daily there is a requirement inside of your world to take a look at what you're seeing. What you're seeing is dictating what you believe is possible. When I'm working all the time and there's never a time to step back and just contemplate, I'm gonna give you a little strategy here. If once a week, once a week, you entered into what we call here in the Brotherhood, the General's Tent. What is the General's Tent? It's really simple. One time a week, I'm gonna set up a couple hours and inside that space, I'm going to look back one week. I'm gonna look back one week. I'm going to investigate my life across body, being, balance, and business, and I'm going to look at where I have come in one week. Did I grow? Did I grow in my body? Did I grow in my spirituality? Did I grow in my relationship with my wife and my children? Did I grow in my business, my bank accounts, or my value as an employee inside the organization I work for? Did I grow? One week assessment. What happened? What did I learn? What can I do different? What am I committed to doing this week? What happened? What did I learned? What can I improve? What am I committed to doing this week? General stint once a week to look back and then do what? Look forward to my new week. This pause in space creates an opportunity for a new perspective. That new perspective allows for a new story. So let's come back and look at what we built on here. Time becomes a first element. Valuing time, that time is bought because inside of that time is space. And that space is what allows a person not to burn to the ground, but more importantly, allows a man to open up perspective. It gives him new eyes, new stories to tell. And in those new stories that he's telling becomes a new outcome, a new outcome that he's selling. Selling himself, selling his wife, selling his family on. That perspective births more power. If I'm lying on the ground, here's what I see. I'm doing the thing. What's the thing they used to do back in the day? Planking. I'm planking. Or maybe I'm feeling really fit, so I'm going to flex my ass. I'm going to superman that shit. Yeah, woo! I'm planking. And I'm talking to you. And I'm like, hey, dude, so what's possible? What are you going to do? 
I don't know, my fucking life's really shitty right now. So fucking, I literally think I can taste, hold on. Oh yeah, I'm licking some shit right now, it's fucking shitty. How's your marriage? Oh, it's shitty. Well, what's going on down there? Fucking shit, man, every goddamn day. Same shit, different day, same shit. Really, what do you see? Nothing. Well, why don't you stand up? Fuck you. I'm not standing up. Dude, no, seriously, you should stand up. No, there's nothing new to see. I already know what's up there. There's nothing new to see. Motherfucker, stand up. Come on, I don't want to. No, stand up, please. Get up. No, I'm not. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh, hello there. Weird, right? Hey. Oh, my marriage is never going to change. She's such a bitch. Fucking bitch. Oh, hello. Hello. I have to work this fucking job forever. I fucking hate it. Oh, my God. Hey, there's you again. Oh, here's a crazy beast. Your power is a function of your elevation. The higher up you can see from here, licking my own floor. I licked my own floor to demonstrate this shit to you. I'm gonna have to lister in my mouth for God's sakes. I'm sitting here right now, I'm looking at my own floor, staring at the floor. There's no possibility, I can't do anything. I'm fucked, oh my God, whoa. Well, hello there. Hey, and then what? Oh, well, hello there. And then what? Standing up, looking down, doesn't look like the same problem. Doesn't look like the same problem. My power is a function of my elevation. My power is a function of my elevation. My power is driven by my perspective and the stories that I believe. That perspective is functionally operated by the space that I've created for myself, and that comes down to owning your time. Who's in it? Who has an opinion in it? What you listen to, what you consume, what you believe inside of that either gives you space or fucks your space. That determines your perspective, and that perspective determines your power. So when I say you need more power to change shit, literally you got to get off the ground, bro. You got to stand up. Stand up. Stand up. That power allows you to produce. Production is what everybody wants to talk about. I want to create some big shit. I want to create some big shit, Garrett. Like, that's why I love the Facebook and social media. Because it's like a platform for people who don't know how to fucking produce to talk about production. <laughs> hey, hey, guys. I'm really pumped. Listen to a great audio this weekend. I'm going to make a million dollars in 2017. Awesome. How much money did you make last month? $137. How about the month before? $123. How, how are you going to do a million? I saw a webinar that said I could make a hundred thousand a month and I could just produce like everyone I just fucking taught. No, no, no. Stop that shit. Your production is a function of what you can see and you're not entitled to shit if you're unwilling to stand up and see. What drives me fucking bonkers is people that do this, particularly men. Plank position. Oh, oh, oh. Everything doesn't work. The system doesn't work. The system doesn't work. It's the president. It's the government. It's my church. It's my wife. It's my kids. It's why I'm just big fucking bum. No, bro, you're fucking fat. You're fat because you're lazy as fuck. You're fat because you don't eat right. You're fat because you don't work out. You're not fat because you're fucking big bone or your thyroid made love to something. Shut the fuck up. You're broke because when you sit and watch Netflix and make love to Game of Thrones, I'm fucking learning marketing. Your marriage doesn't work because when you know you need to have a conversation, you won't. Where I collide and you avoid and end up back on Game of Thrones on Netflix or 24 or some other hand job game hoping that you will get bigger results. Your bigger results are on the other side of doing what? Owning your time. I'm not even angry at you. 
You might think I'm angry at you. If you're here for the first time, you're like, this guy's fucking maniac. He's angry at us. I'm angry at you. I'm angry at a symbol of you. Symbol of you. The worst is when you start pulling this shit. Ready? Watch my hips. Watch my hips. You start pulling this shit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I fucking love my shitty life. I'm fucking the shit out of this shitty life. Yes. Yes. And then next thing you know, there's like nine of you. Nine of your buddies. They're all shit face down on the ground and you're all fucking the shit out of a shitty life. Stop fucking a shitty life. What the fuck? The worst part is you're actually just fucking making love to a goddamn piece of plastic. <laughs> At least get a flashlight. It's probably an improvement. <sighs> well, <laughs> I hope you're getting something from this. I'm having fun sharing it with you. Profit. This is your result. You either get it or you don't. You either get it or you don't. For years, we focused on trying to bring this message to men. There was one gateway. It was Warrior Week. Then we birthed Warrior X. But over the past five months, we have had over 400 men, 100 men every three weeks, allowed into a unique experience who are tired of fucking the ground and fucking a shitty life or in some cases fucking a good life and who want greatness, who want more. This is why we built the Warrior Book. To me, what, what the Warrior Book is, it's, it's, it's a masterstroke. It's a work of art. It's, it's, a, it's a gift of life, really. It's a, it's a gift for you to be able to create the life that you want in full control. Not reliant on anybody else, but reliant on the only person that matters, and that's you. So for anybody who's thinking about joining Warrior, I would say, what the hell are you waiting for? This is your opportunity to create your ideal life. This is an opportunity to seriously send your life off in a whole new trajectory. So if you're somebody who knows there's more out there for you, who knows that you're here to make a difference, then the science that sits inside of this book is going to significantly enhance your chances of doing just that. I spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars joining every fucking business group, every men's group, trying to find something this organized, this functional, with guys this quality you're going to open up and share, with this level of teaching and depth, in an organized format that fucking anybody could follow. I found it here. wrap up today at today's episode episode number seven we're going to end with this following idea the code is the foundation the code is what we lay ourselves on the code is this ground without this ground without this foundation everything else we talked about in the peak formula is worthless it doesn't work it doesn't work because if you're a liar or if you lie to yourself you lie to your wife you lie to your friends you lie to your employees you lie to your employer if you can't tell the truth, you have no hope. There is no promise. There is no peak formula for you. But once we do, once we do, we're able to live by the code. Be real, get raw, stay relevant with a ruthless commitment to big-ass results today. Once that occurs, we can then move into the peak formula. Peak formula is very simple. Number one, time. A shift in perspective in the way you see your time. What is my time? But more importantly, how am I able to show up inside of time? What is my value inside of time? How, what is my capacity inside of time? How do I view time? Is time the most valuable thing on my scale? 
or is it the least valuable? This shift from time then of valuing your time and your capacity in time leads to space. And space itself allows you to open up and to create opportunity to birth a new perspective. Without a new perspective, it is impossible to do anything different. I don't care if it's dating, marriage, raising your children, fitness, food, business, make money, God, spirituality, does not matter. If you do not change the way you see shit, you cannot create new shit. This is why perspective precedes power. Power does not give us perspective. Space gives us perspective. What gives us perspective is space. What gives us space is owning our time. Own your time, get space. Get space, gain new perspective. Gain new perspective, access power. Power then gives you the courage to do something different. Power is courage. Power is capacity. Power is a desire to become something bigger, better, and different than you are today. And that production itself is measured in its successfulness by the bottom line profits. As an entrepreneur, don't give a shit if you did 100 million in revenue this year, if you're taking home, not enough to pay your bills. If you work at a gas station, I can love you too, doesn't fucking matter if you have no job. At the end of the day, your results are measured by your profit. Profit is nothing more than a return that is greater than what was invested. Do you have the results that you want? As a peak performer, one of the things I can tell you in this peak formula is that when you investigate and you look at your profit and you realize that your results are not what you want, it will give you the reality of this, investigating how you're producing, knowing that that directly affects profit. If you investigate how you're producing and shit still is not changing, then we got to come back to power because possibly the power is fucking up production. If power is there or weak and we don't know why, we come back to perspective. What are the stories that we're telling that are fucking up power? If those stories themselves need deeper dive, we figure out, well, what stressful shit have I taken on that's closing up that space? And inevitably, it always comes back to the same thing, which is time. My life did not, uh, my life did not change overnight. My life is not perfect. Um, my life never will be perfect because I'm constantly growing, which means no matter what I do, I am constantly learning to gain a different perspective of time. And you literally don't know how much you have. Like you don't. Like I had two radically interesting experiences in the past week on Facebook where two individuals who I'm not deeply connected to, I don't know them very well, three individuals that take that back in the last two months. Men, business owners, producers, one, brain cancer, another, blood infection, and another one, cancer. All three of these men in weakened positions physically in hospitals high energy guys, big producers, aggressively passionate about what they do. And I become aware of these conditions. And the interesting thing that happens with death or the sense of death, and I know, I get it. I didn't lose my teeth because I chewed, but I got cancer. I had a tumor in my brain. Nine months wired shut, I get it. The thing that's so hard when I see this is oftentimes it requires the death of someone we know, love, or are connected to to wake us up to time. Oftentimes it requires the traumatic experience inside of your own life to fucking choose to change. It's hard to choose to change and that's why most people are compelled to change. Why most men won't change their relationship until their wife files divorce. And then motherfucker, it's like buying life insurance after you're dead. It's like buying fire insurance when the house is already burning. Or you could just invest in worry book. I can guarantee you even at the highest level inside a warrior, you will find the investment in warrior doesn't take things from you. There's only a regret for the men who sat on the sideline for too fucking long. You want more time? Stop playing alone. You want more time? Join us. This is episode number seven, and that's a wrap. When you walk in a room,
when you have nothing to hide, you're the single most motherfucking power guy in that room. Okay, so we're back in the game. Back in the game for a couple comments, a couple ideas. For those of you still on, we still got a handful of you still on the show live. Um, this is kind of our chance to have a little, a little chit-chat after the show. If you'd like to have a little chit-chat uh, so that you get that this is a real live show. This isn't just something that we, we put on um, as a video and then... Hope that you do some cool shit with it. If you're watching this on demand or replay or we boosted or posted this um, and we ran ads at it so that you could see it, great. Um, but if you're here live with us, uh, here's what we've got. We've got, a, we've got a little section here to be able to answer some questions for a few minutes. I'm going to go for six minutes um, and then we'll be done uh, for today. So if you have questions or you have comments um, or ideas that you'd like to share, uh, great. Uh, so I'm going to come down and we'll get a list here. We have some brave women on today. We had Danielle Morell. She said, seeing him speak in person motivated me, and I am a woman. Every man needs a coach like this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and screenshot that shit. That right there is great marketing. you got to love it when uh, the women on the sideline. You know what's great is crazy is I, I actually have a ton of single women in their 30s who ask us all the time the following. My wife's in an industry with a lot of beautiful women, powerful women, stylists in our hair industry with our salons, and uh, they constantly ask for this. They're like, uh, do you have any warrior men for me? And I laugh, and I was like, most of them are where men are married or trying to stay married, so not usually. And, um, but the one common comment is, like, I wish that all men could get this. And I was like, no shit. We had that same conversation going on with our teenagers uh, about Warrior. Um, Todd Gaster. Todd, dude, I have not, uh, man, you and I have not had a conversation. Todd Gaster was actually said, I appreciate your journey as it speaks to me, and for that I say thank you. Um, <clears throat> And Todd, uh, Todd came in, and Todd was actually there at the very, 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 very fucking beginning when um, I was contemplating the real committed launch of Wake Up Warrior 2012. It was actually beginning of 2013 I met Todd. So, Todd, what's up, brother? And um, during that time, one of the things that I had a hard time with was this idea of just going all in with Warrior. I ran a marketing consulting firm with a guy named Adam Spiel at the time. I could have gone back into financial services. I'm back in financial services now um, with some of our side games and other businesses we run. But uh, it, was, uh, it was something that I, I just, I, for whatever reason, I couldn't pull the trigger. And uh, there, was one, there was one comment that uh, a shared mentor of ours at the time, his, guy, his name was Kevin Nations, he, he asked me a question. And people say, you know, what, a, what are great mentors and great coaches do? Uh, they, they hold the space and ask you fucking the questions you didn't even know you should be asking. And more than that, they give you a space to have the courage to just answer the question. And I sat there with all of uh, Wake Up Warrior stuff um, on these big sticky notes on the walls. And on one side, I had one business, my consulting business. I had a marketing business on the other side. I had Wake Up Warrior. I had our salon on the other side. All these sticky notes up. Uh, you can actually go back and search this up. I believe it was January 2013. If you want to confirm this shit, go look at my personal Facebook page, Gary J. White. And you will go back and you can see the picture. I have a red hat on backwards. And I make a declaration. And that declaration was that I am shutting all of my businesses down. Shutting all of my businesses down. And I shut them all down. And inside of shutting all my businesses down, um, it completely created space to do what? To do one. And I was sitting there with all these flip charts on the wall, and Kevin asked me a question. He said, <clears throat> which of these do you love doing the most? I said, well, I love doing Warrior. And then he responded with this. Well, why don't you just do that? You would think, well, was there something magical? Was there some fucking magical strategy? And I've had a ton of mentors before, Kevin, and I've had a ton after. And all of them have had an impact on me. I've been part of masterminds and organizations and groups and events all over the world. I commit to be in these spaces because I'm searching for perspective. So Todd was there in the beginning, buddy, when, uh, when we did this. And um, it was hard. It was a hard game. 
Like, people look at Warrior now and they don't get it. They don't get the fucking sacrifice. Not only that I went through my own personal life to get to this place, but they don't get the sacrifice that it took to turn this into an organization that could actually get to you. Like, fucking sacrifice at the highest extreme. Could have been a, a hundred other ways, a thousand other ways. I could have made more money faster with less stress than doing Warrior. But Warrior was the one that I knew was going to, to fucking make a difference. And that was one thing when I lost my mortgage businesses and my, my investment firms and we started, we like got our asses kicked. I mean, from 2000, 2008, 2008 got killed. And uh, like a lot of people did. And it's one thing to build one empire, it's another thing to build two. Um, I don't think a true entrepreneur actually knows what the fuck he's doing until he's built and lost one and then built it again. Because there's just wisdom in that that comes that you can't learn any other way. Uh, you can talk theory about it all day long. Uh, it's tough. You just can't gain it. It's like trying to know how to how breastfeeding feels by watching a YouTube video until you have a baby like bite down on your nipple. I don't think you're gonna have a clue what that actually feels like. Um, and inside of that, I had to make some really fucking hard decisions. But I made a decision back then, and one of them was I refuse to build a business that's not driven by purpose. Like I have to feel like I fucking do something that matters. And I do that in hair, and I do that in this game. I do this in my consulting businesses. We do this in financial services. I don't back shit that I don't think fucking matters. So there you go. Next one, um, Luke said, I've applied your teachings, but I'm losing friends at an alarming rate. Well, you should be. When you're king of the shitheads and you live a life built on friendships that are bullshit, when you start to tell the truth, these relationships die. Why? Because they were bullshit. How do I know? Because it happened. My wife and I literally lost all of our friends. All of them. And for about two years, both of our families turned their backs on us. And it was my wife and I saying, fuck you to the world and building our lives. We left the religion we were raised in. We left the way that we were supposed to do things. We left parenting strategies. We left everything. We said, fuck it to the way it's been. We're going to create our lives driven by a voice inside. And when you do that, here's why people leave. They leave because you broke the social agreement. The social agreement says you will do X and I will do Y. And when you stop doing X, they don't know how to respond when you provide Z. I'm going to do Z. They only know Y in response to X. So when you offer up Z, they're like, what the fuck? And the only thing that will happen is you will return back down from trying to hit Z and go to Y. And you will do the things that make you comfortable with them again. Or they will raise up or you'll be done. I watched my wife painfully tell people to fuck off. Friends she had forever who were attacking me, attacking her. She's like, we don't fucking need you in our lives. Fuck you. And so there was a time we lived horribly alone. And it was beautiful for our marriage. You know why? Because it made us listen. We had to trust each other. We had to trust one another. I had to learn to lean on her. She had to learn to lean on me. And we had to learn to lean on this voice inside of us above all other things. People talk about being led by God. People talk about being led. You know, we want to look at all these dead people that wrote about their journals and then we read them and we're like, cool, those, person, those people had faith. Those people had courage. Yet when you called upon to make some of the same courageous decisions, most motherfuckers won't make those decisions. They'll read about those decisions, but they won't do them. And what if that means that you got to walk from everything you know to get what you need to grow? For most people, this is too much. The pain of losing friendships is too much. See, I'm not interested in friends. Fuck friends. Friends are bullshit. What I'm interested in are brothers. What I'm interested in is family. And not family because we were born from the same vagina. I'm talking about family by choice. Family by living by belief system. Family by code. Family and brothers who have the courage to tell truth, to speak truth, who expect truth, who won't tolerate mediocrity, and who won't tolerate the idea of being fucking okay and bullshitting about Tom Brady and the Super Bowl while their fucking marriages fall apart. But I get it, dude. It's hard. This is why warrior brotherhood exists. Because if you're going to take this shit on, I have to do it alone. Or you could do it with us. Surrounded by a bunch of men that have been living this for years and men who just started doing this with you. 
Take a couple more and then we're done. Tough to beat David August suits. Yeah, no shit, Jason. David August suits are fucking legit. So I'm just telling you right now, if you don't have a David August suit, A, you got to be willing to invest some dollars, and B, it's sweet. You know the problem with my suit, Jeremy? Mm. I was buffer when we got this suit. I had bigger muscles, so my shirts are a little baggy. Mm. I said, don't get smaller. I got smaller. So there you go. Um, Orrin came in. Admitting the truth is my first step. Thank you for providing the way to do that. You're welcome. Dan, what practices do you have in place now to keep the same simplicity that came as a result of the decision to follow the path of the one thing warrior? Uh, man, I come back to my basis every single week, Dan. I surround people, surround myself with people that, that encourage me to take that leap. But on top of this also, I literally the general same thing I talked about in today's conversation, I do that every week. I create space. I follow the same fucking formula. If I don't have space, I get stupid. So I prefer to not be stupid, though I'm stupid often. Um, so my commitment is to create space. I do that every single week in a general stand experience. I do it every single morning for a couple hours with my own walk and talks with myself or with my team. Um, Greg, you're, as, I journey, as I journey towards collecting my investment into Warrior, I've been contemplating looking to take on a mentor. There are some men that appear to me to have it all in business and life sense. I'm looking for a paradigm shift in life. Where is it? I just don't know what to do. What? I just don't want to do it when it's too late. Well, Greg, get your ass into Warrior Book. Dude, if you, if you can't put $1,000 together for yourself right now, I made this thing fucking ridiculously attainable. $1,000, Greg. Invest $1,000. Let me ship you the worry book. Let me ship you the black book. Let me put you in a fast track. Let me help you get on the path. Whether you end up working with me personally one-on-one -on -one forever or ever at all, or you come in for a short stint in the warrior or not, there is nowhere on the fucking planet for men right now where a $1,000 investment will ROI that move. Nowhere. I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe against any fucking men's group, church group on the planet. Nowhere. Because we were businessmen that built this, not personal development trainers who built this. We built this with results in mind, and we built it from our own wisdom. Come in March 1st. Get your ass in the game. Don't start worrying about a mentor when you've got a brotherhood. You will get ridiculous traction in who you see yourself to be at the end of the Warrior Book Fast Track Experience. is isn't going to be the same man you see yourself to be today. Uh, let's go. Dan Valentine, Worry Bick is the best investment I made in my life, Dan. I'm just barely scratching the surface of its impact. Dan! Bro, are you one of the kings or not, bro? I see you creeping on the sideline. I know you're inside Worry Book. Hmm? And yes, Dan, great work on Worry Book. Michael Bishop, my wife, my kids, and my best testimony to the court. There we go. Uh, Bryce said, <clears throat> I invested 33% of my savings in the warrior book because I'm ruthlessly committed to changing my life. This is the best hack out there, brothers. Shit, I'm screenshotting that shit. Another great witness to it. Greg, it's the next step, dude, March 1st. I better see your ass inside Warrior Book Network. Like, if I don't see you inside there, dude, I will punch you in the face every time you come on this show. Get your ass in the game, dude. All right. I think we're done. We're done for today. And uh, with that said, I'm going to leave you with one last little inspirational video. Yeah, well, Dan, that's the first step, dude. You can only be part of the four kings if you take the first step. Just take the first fucking step and we'll deal with the next step after that. Gentlemen, ladies who have had enough courage to stay on through this show, let me leave you with one last two-minute message here in episode seven. Gentlemen, we live by code here. That code itself is life. That code itself is life. If you violate the code, you die. If you violate the code, you fucking die. The code is simple. You can boil it down to one principle. Stop fucking lying. Stop lying to yourself about where you are. Stop lying to yourself about what you want. Stop lying to yourself about where you want to go. It is a double-edged sword, both the lies of denying your desire for a life that you truly want, and number two, lying about where you are. Right now, you are wet. 
You are laying in a beach in a strange place that you do not know because you were transmitted here with the hood on. No one knows where you are. Your wife and children do not know where you are. You don't even fucking know where you are. You can do nothing about those circumstances. The only way you can help them is to help yourself. If the king doesn't rise, the kingdom dies. If the king doesn't rise, the kingdom dies. The minute those men on your unit decide to actually show me that they give a fuck, not just in words, oh Garrett, I want to have it all. Garrett, I'm going to tell the truth. Garrett, I'm going to live by the code. Garrett, I want to live for my wife, my children, and my legacy. I want to have it all. Bullshit. Shut your fucking mouth and show me. Men don't trust me because of how I talk. They trust me because of how I fucking walk. And I've never asked a man here to do anything I have not done. What? Huddle up and look at each other. Huddle up and look at each other. Better. Better. book is it's 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 a masterstroke it's a work of art it's it's a it's a gift of life really it's a it's a gift for you to be able to create the life that you want in full control not reliance on anybody else but reliant on the only person that matters and that's you so for anybody who's thinking about joining warrior I would say what the hell are you waiting for this is your opportunity to create your ideal life. This is an opportunity to seriously send your life off in a whole new trajectory. So if you're somebody who knows there's more out there for you, who knows that you're here to make a difference, then the science that sits inside of this book is going to significantly enhance your chances of doing just that. Spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars joining every fucking business group, every men's group, trying to find something this organized, this functional, with guys this quality you're going to open up and share with this level of teaching and depth in an organized format that fucking anybody could follow. To me, what, what the Warrior book is, it's, it's, it's a masterstroke. It's a work of art. It's, it's, a, it's a gift of life, really. It's a, it's a gift for you to be able to create the life.
that you want. Full control. Gentlemen, we live by a code here. That code itself is life. That code itself is life. If you violate the code, you die. If you violate the code, you fucking die. The code is simple. You can boil it down to one principle. Stop fucking lying. Stop lying to yourself about where you are. Stop lying to yourself about what you want. Stop lying to yourself about where you want to go. It is a double-edged sword. Both the lies of denying your desire for a life that you truly want. And number two, lying about where you are. Right now, you are wet. You are laying in a beach in a strange place that you do not know because you were transported here with a hood on. No one knows where you are. Your wife and children do not know where you are. You don't even fucking know where you are. You can do nothing about those circumstances. The only way you can help them is to help yourself. If the king doesn't rise, the kingdom dies. If the king doesn't rise, the kingdom dies. The minute those men on your unit decide to actually show me that they give up fuck, not just in words, oh Garrett, I want to have it all. Garrett, I'm going to tell the truth. Garrett, I'm going to live by the code. Garrett, I want to live for my wife, my children, and my legacy. I want to have it all. Bullshit. Shut your fucking mouth and show me. Men don't trust me because of how I talk. They trust me because of how I fucking walk. And I've never asked a man here to do anything I have not done. What? Huddle up and look at each other. Huddle up and look at each other. Better. Better. One thing to say it, it's another thing to believe it. We say we're all in. We say we're all in. I'm all in, they say. I'm all in unless my wife fucking brings hell on me. I'm all in unless the guy arrest brings hell on me. I'm all in unless shit gets spicy. My brother, welcome. If you're on this page you're watching this video, it means you're a man that doesn't fuck around. There's a lot of things you could be doing. There's a lot of parts and aspects of Wake Up Warrior that you could be part of. But the one thing that's common amidst all of those experiences is this unity around a conversation of power. The Four Kings is a conversation of power also. But it's a conversation of acceleration of power that I have never introduced to the marketplace before. It's never been available at this way and this magnitude with this amount of focus and this amount of time and energy and attention directly from me one on one. If you're on this page and you don't own a business, 
and you are not a currently highly productive man inside the conversation of business, then enjoy this video, but this is not likely a fit for you. Who is this for? This is for businessmen, men who are likely married, who have children, who have built big shit, who know the pressure that comes with building big things. The payroll commitments every two weeks of hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions. The commitment that comes from the stretched anticipation every morning as you wake up with the pressure of millions of people's ideas and concepts coming to your door. Hundreds of employees or executive teams who are searching for answers and they all come from you. Ultimately knowing that the direction of many people's lives is determined upon the power that you access or you do not access on a daily basis. The minute those men on your unit decide to actually show me that they give a fuck, not just in words, oh Garrett, I want to have it all. Garrett, I'm going to tell the truth. Garrett, I'm going to live by the code. Garrett, I want to live for my wife, my children, and my legacy. I want to have it all. Bullshit. Shut your fucking mouth and show me. Men don't trust me because of how I talk. They trust me because of how I fucking walk. And I've never asked a man here to do anything I have not done. The Four Kings is a revolutionary conversation. It is born inside the fire that has become the Wake Up Warrior movement. Only this time, it's with me. One-on-one, -on -one, no mastermind, no events, pure fire, one outcome. Ten years of results in ten months. Now some may say that's impossible. Yet I have lived this time warp I speak of, but it requires a focus and an intensity that cannot be distracted by the side tangent conversations of another man. It requires an exclusive focus on the results that you're wanting and the power necessary to get them. These two convocations of the four kings is power, production, and profit. Don't get me wrong, this is not simply a conversation about how to date your wife better or how to have better sex inside of a relationship. Although that may have an impact on your production, we're going to have a conversation that is comprehensive in nature, but a game that is built over 10 months, one-on-one -on -one with me, that is going to take you to the limits across all four areas of your life with a central focus of production that ends in maximized profitability. The reason a man might even search for this is because of what I call the five pits. The five pits of despair, one of which I have spent days, months, and even years inside of each one of these pits. These five pits, if a man does not raise himself up out of these pits, the production and the creation that has been the empire that he's built will fade to the side. And what will be left is simply a man who wants to run and hide. I've been perplexed by this, how a powerful man could choose such a path as maybe you have and I can. And yet at the end of that journey, only find ourselves in a place yearning for something different or something more. This idea of power is something that is not elusive to me, but what it has become is a passion of searching for how it connects to productivity. This first pit I speak of is the business prison. This was me in my first three businesses, was building a business that in the beginning I was in love with, I was in fire with, I was passionate about. Searching, seeking, building, producing, expanding, watching as the payroll and expenses rose while simultaneously the profitability rose. Only to wake up one morning inside of that business and go, what the fuck have I built? What have I built? At what point did the business begin to pull me instead of me pull the business? The despair that a man faces inside of this place has him do crazy shit, has you do crazy things if you're in this place. It has you choose to burn things to the ground that ultimately never should have been burnt. It has you begin to lose a sense of where the fuck am I? I am a prisoner inside my own home. Nothing worse than knowing that the walls of the prison that you currently reside in were actually created and edified by you. Pit number one. Pit number two, the identity crisis. This is a man who actually figures out how to climb out of that pit. 
He finds a way to take the business and put it into order and says, here is the business that I built and has built it to a way that allows him to step away from this business. It's profitable. It's productive. It's producing the life that he wants. But, but brother, Inside of this becomes another question, something you weren't anticipating. It's when you begin to move away from what was the prison, you begin to find yourself in a place of saying, well, who the fuck am I now? Professional athletes, ex-military and businessmen like you and I, we leave the identity of who it was in our creativity. We now find ourselves lost once again. This fear of existing in an identity crisis keeps us addicted to staying back in the same way. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy to go back into a business prison. So although we've built it to work, when I stay stuck in this identity crisis, it will pull me right back down to earth and put me right back into the same prison of pit number one. And most men will live their entire business lives between pit number one and pit number two, stuck, trapped, and repeating a karmic loop of insanity. Pit number three. Pit number three is hypergrowth. These are men who say, listen, I don't have any plans of retirement, and maybe that's you. Maybe you are the guy who says, I will never fucking retire. I'm that guy. I'm the guy who says, listen, my businesses cannot own me, and my identity is constantly expanding. Who I was when I began to build the business I'm in is not who I am today. And that new identity is being reborn, but it requires permission to become new. It requires people inside your world to say, motherfucker, let's go. You can do this. Let's go. You must go because this third pit, though, becomes the hyper growth desire. He says, give it, man, I'm lacking the permission. I'm lacking the fire. I want to run again, but I'm 50. I want to run again, but I'm 45. I've already played this game and I'm alive, but I've got to fight to stay alive. I want to grow. Growth is who I am. It's not what I just take a stand on. That my businesses, and though most people won't get it, they're like, what you have is great. What you have is in a prison. What you have is a beautiful identity. You're a businessman. And inside of this, you say, listen, I realize all those things are wonderful, but I want more. And this becomes confusing because people begin to tell you that you shouldn't want more. And so amidst your own suffering, you begin to stifle the vision for a bigger future. And your future becomes smaller than your past. And inside of that place, particularly to my brothers who are 50 years and older, your life itself begins to lose the color that it once had. You just want to grow. And without the hyper growth and without the ability to go, things again retreat back into an identity crisis and then slowly back into the same fucking prison we just talked about. And yet if a man can break out of that prison, he can find that new sense of identity every week and every month as he grows quarter over quarter. And inside of this can commit to growth, commit to hyper growth, not just I'm going to grow 5% this year. It is, listen, I'm going to take a 20% growth. I'm going to take a 33% revenue growth this year. And me as a CEO, the business owner, the founder of this game is going to push this bitch and pull it to the finish line. Waking up every day with a sense of fire and desire. Yet the problem is inside of that comes down to the ability to hire and fire. Pit number four. The sinking ship. This is an individual who built the business. The business that works. But brother, you fucked up along the way. You didn't even know you did. You didn't know about the warrior's way. And you, like many men, I live in a county like this, 84% divorce rate in Orange County. The cities and the neighborhoods that I live in here in Dana Point, Laguna Beach, where our offices are located, I'm surrounded by powerful men, gray-haired men in their 60s, men who are married to women 20, 30 years younger than the men trying to figure out how do I deal with the reality that I built my empire and forgot about my family. This sinking ship experience becomes the fact that the despair that comes from a life that's not working pales in comparison to everything that was working inside a business. And this despair leads to addiction and this addiction leads to destruction and that destruction leads to a life that is burned to the ground. Number five, fuck it, I want out. See, all these pits lead to the same harsh reality and that reality is this. If you don't address the nature of who you are as a man and have somebody inside of your world to hold your hand 
and not to do the fucking work for you, but to show you the promised land. The promised land that's always been in your mind, but the one you've lacked the courage to go find. The one that you got here with, but the one that you've forgotten and left behind. That vision for a future is possible. And that growth itself is plausible. And what's fucking more expensive than the four kings? A divorce. A divorce riding on the wings of a life that ran out of control. What's more expensive? The addictions and the recovery and the trainers and the people that have to support you now that you found yourself in a life that is not working. These five pits as we review them, pit number one, the business prison, pit number two, the identity crisis, pit number three, hyper growth, pit number four, the sinking ship, pit number five, the fuck it I want out, I want out of this business, I don't know, what I signed up for is not who I am anymore. These five pits, if they're not mastered, destroy men. And so while some men deal with the basics of the warrior's way, they live the game of the code and telling the truth and be real, get raw, stay relevant with a ruthless commitment to big ass results today. And then there's the second phase of body being balanced and business inside the core. And then they get the keys, which is what, why, when, how, and the one thing. And then they get the game, which is 90 day challenges with 16, 30 day benchmarks and weekly targets. There are a few, in this case in 2017, there are four of you. Four of you that are gonna come on a journey that's gonna have me fly to you. That's gonna have you fly to me that's gonna have us work every single week virtually, that's gonna take the desires that you've been scared to even speak, I'm gonna put those out on paper. We're gonna get them real for you across the board. And inside of that, we are going to build a world of creation inside of your life. We are going to build a frame that will allow you to lead and to grow in a way that you have never known possible before. This game itself I call the peak formula. It's a simple formula, it's not complex. It doesn't require a degree, a master's degree. It doesn't require you to be a doctor, a lawyer. It doesn't require you to fucking make $10 million a year. What it requires you to do is say, I'm a man in the pit who's more legit than a normal player and I need custom guidance inside of this game because if you could just chip away at all the fucking bullshit and we could just get after it, Garrett, I know I can do this. I'm that fucking kind of guy. I'm that guy that finds the man who says, listen, just create the space for me. Help me hold it when I doubt. Remind me of what I've committed to. And inside of that space, I believe in myself. You may be that guy or have forgotten who that guy is. Maybe you were the guy that took the fucking shot with two seconds left, but now you're the guy passing the rock. Regardless of how that goes, the peak formula itself, first goal is to create time. You don't create more time, we just make more time. We're going to make you more effective than you've ever been before. The way we're going to do that is have you stop fucking bullshitting. We're going to get to truth at a level you've never been to truth. We're going to help you find truth in places you've never discovered. We're going to get rid of bullshit stories across the board that suck up your time. That time itself is going to lead to space. With this less bullshit going on inside your life, you're going to have space. Space around your executive, space around your business, space inside your own mind, space inside the game called your desires and your business. That space is going to bleed over into your relationships. You're going to start to see how life itself seems to slow down and that you don't even need more time. You need more space inside of time and inside that space for the very first fucking time you're gonna find perspective. Perspective you've been searching for for likely years. You know, getting to the place you're at, it's not what you know, it's what you see. It's a possibility you see and the permission that you give to yourself inside of that perspective to go. It's not that you don't know what to do most times. It's that you lack the permission and the courage to do the shit you know you need to do. This is what I do, me and you. I am the fire that lights your desire inside of that space with a system and a process with you uniquely and customized. We're going to open up perspective in a way that you've never had it before. And inside of that perspective, we're going to find power that you've never felt before. Not because I'm going to bottle it up and ship it to your fucking house, but because you're going to unlock it inside of you. And when you forget, my job is to remind you. My job is to remind you and to guide you and to ask you the hard fucking questions you won't ask. To give you the perspective around the corner that you know won't last if we don't get it. This game then of space and time 
time leading to space, space leading to perspective, perspective leading to power. That power must be focused into productions. Big ass results, scary targets inside a business that will force you to become a new man, force you to become a new leader, force you to become a new marketer, a new salesman. They will require you, require you to lead, to lead brother in ways you've never led before, to lead in ways that you know no, deep inside there's a store, a store of these emotions and this clarity that if you could just grab it, the doing of the game becomes easy. Not because the doing in and of itself became easy, but because you became more fucking powerful. Most men, this is too much. My wife tells me all the time, you're too much. Can you tone down just a little bit? You're a little too much. You're overwhelming me right now. This is not for motherfuckers who get overwhelmed easy. Brother, you got to be a player to run with me at this speed. That's why most men sit in a group of four to five hundred and let me yell into a camera. Most men will sit in tens of thousands and read the emails because that's the diffused power that they can deal with. But there are four of you. There are four of you who are going to go to places in 2017 that not only wouldn't have happened in the next decade, but are going to prove that the warrior's way, created in the most elite, customized way ever, can produce 10 years of results in 10 months. This production has one outcome, profit, profit. If you currently operate in a business in which the investment to be here, it is not even feasible for you to 10x that investment in 10 months, then this is not a place for you. If you are a corporate executive, although you make great money, this is not for you. You have to be able to control your income. You have to be able to control your game. You have got to be able to make fucking moves. You've got to be the king of your own game. If you're not a king of your game, I love you. I respect you. Come to Warrior Week. Be part of one of our experiences and our programs. This is for a fucking man who runs likely not one, but multiple businesses at once. Like the first few applicants for the kings who came in who run six, seven businesses. And a couple others who had one or two. Productivity and profitability is not your issue. It's growth. If this game itself is for you, here's what I want you to do next. Your next step is to apply. This application doesn't guarantee that you will be accepted. This application is a journey and a tryout in and of itself. It's not fucking simple. It's not easy. It's a depth, deep dive commitment because you understand, brother, you will be the first man who I fly to go meet. I gotta know who you are. I gotta know what your wife is like. I gotta know what your children are like. I gotta look into your home. I gotta see your businesses. I gotta see the environment you operate in day to day. We have to be clear. And then you're gonna have to come out here to Laguna Beach to my training facilities with me and my teams. And then we're gonna connect. There will be no men inside the game outside of these four who get more time and energy from me and more focus when I walk on a beach in the morning and the phone calls we have so likely daily at times. There will be no men inside the game who will get this kind of attention so brother I gotta make sure we're a fucking fit because at the end of the day if we're not you'll fucking hate me I'll hate you I'll boot you out or you'll quit and so there's four of you there's four and it is not cheap this will be the biggest investment requirement in the history of Wake Up Warrior because I expect the biggest results out of these four men than we have ever had in the history of Warrior. So if you're ready to become my case studies inside of the Four Kings, to take business and life to levels of results and profitability that you've never even anticipated but you always wished you had, your next step is really simple. Complete the application on this page. You'll be contacted by my team You'll have a preemptive interview with Coach Sam Falsafi. And from that interview, you will then be passed on to me. And we will have a conversation. And if it's a fit at the end of that, brother, then we will move forward. And if it's not, then I will say thank you for making a run at the Four Kings.
when you have nothing to hide, you're the single most motherfucking power guy in that room. Yeah.